Welcome to WTF Biology, where God was clearly mid-blunt when he cooked up these fever dream critters. Parrotfish. Bro, swear to God, this parrotfish is out surviving us all. It blows 2.5% of its daily energy on a DIY gelatin tent every night just to crash, without those blood-sucking nathide parasites turning its fins into a midnight snack. You know, if you don't get that quality shut-eye, you can't grind for the man tomorrow. So take a page from the parrotfish playbook. Slime up, sleep tight, or you'll end up like me, chugging Starbucks at dawn just to pretend I'm not already half-zombie for the boss. Flounder. Thank God, Ariel's sidekick flounder from The Little Mermaid isn't modeled after the real-life flatfish. Because let me tell you, these guys start out totally normal as larvae, swimming upright like your average fish, with eyes on both sides of their head, just chowing down on tiny plankton vibes. But then, after a few weeks, boom, metamorphosis hits like a plot twist. One eye straight up migrates across the skull to join the other one. The whole fish flattens out, turning into a living pancake plastered to the ocean floor. It's wild like a war-drafted eye reuniting with its sweetheart on the same side. Straight out of Pixar's Finding Flounder's Eye, the Migration Edition. Hagfish. Look, this ain't your garden variety eel, it's a hagfish. Basically a slimy, spineless tube of nope living in the deep sea. But when some predator shark gulps it down, boom, the hagfish goes full defense mode, unleashing a torrent of white, gooey slime right into the attacker's throat and gills. Not only does it look straight out of a horror flick, but it clogs up every breathing hole, suffocating the poor sap until it has to spit the hagfish out and bail. Then, to clean up its own mess, the hagfish ties itself into a simple overhand knot and slides it from tail to head, wiping off all that gunk like it's no big deal. It's like, I tied the knot, so I'll untie it too. Easy peasy. Dude, why do I get this vibe that when a hagfish gets snagged, it's like that slimy freak hitting the big O a thousand times over? Fangtoothfish. If you're describing this deep-sea nightmare fish to your buddies, it'd go something like, Picture a tiny-ass fish, just 18 centimeters long, about the size of your corn on a bad day. Ugly mug that'd make the devil jealous, plus jaws packed with teeth as big as a human's. Oh shit, why evolve like that, bro? Turns out those chompers aren't for shredding. They're just a vice grip to hold prey in place while it gulps the whole damn thing down whole. No chewing required. Kind of like diving into the deep sea for a decent catch. Harder than swiping right on Tinder and actually getting a date. Emperor Angelfish Down in the vibrant coral reefs of the Indo-Pacific, Emperor Angelfish strut around in outfits flashier than a royal gala. But the real crown jewel? One dominant male lords over a harem of four to five females? Straight up sultan vibes, spawning heirs left and right to keep the dynasty popping. Then, plot twist of the century, the king keels over, and it's not the little princess scrambling for the throne. Nah, the biggest queen in the harem seizes the moment. Social cues hit, hormones flip, ovaries bail in days, testes pop up in a, and boom, she's the new aggressive lord, swirling and schmoozing the ladies with that signature male swagger to lock down her reign. It's basically the crown, but underwater. No abdication scandals or corgi drama, just one fish yeeting her gender to ensure the bloodline doesn't skip a beat. God must have been totally obsessed with that series while designing this fish species. Mud Skipper Life in the intertidal zone is straight up brutal. Tides crashing in and out like a bad hangover, forcing fish to level up their survival game in ways that'd make Darwin spit his coffee. Mud skippers? Not the weirdest, but definitely the goofiest amphibious clowns out there. As the tide pulls back, these stubby weirdos just waddle out on their pectoral fin legs like drunk toddlers on a mudslide, baking under the sun while packing a mini water backpack in their gills to keep their skin from turning into beef jerky. They roll in the muck for moisture, then, boom, leap like bad breakdancers to snag a mate's eye. Oh, and don't get them started on territory. These fish are petty AF. Here's how they throw down. What you want, bro? You know who I am? Frick huh? you! Get away, pitch! This mud's mine! Step off before I yank you back to the ocean! Frick you! Desert Pupfish Check out this pint-sized cutie of a fish. Totally normal looking, no creepy vibes, can't even walk on land like those mud skipper freaks. But damn, it thrives in a literal hot tub from Satan in the scorching hot springs of the Sonora Desert, Mexico-USA border, where the water hits over 45 degrees Celsius, and oxygen scarcer than a polite Twitter thread, one-tenth normal levels. These bad boys have been generational tenants here, turning a soup pot from hell into their forever home. Oh, and plot twist, this absolute stunner's endangered AF. While the rest of our weird list is all grotesque mutants, the desert pupfish is the sparkling gem we can't lose. So let's rally to save this stunner before extinction fossils our fave non-freak. Who's with me? Please, guys. Mouth-brooding cichlids? Swear to God, reading about these mouth-brooding cichlids had me blushing like a middle schooler caught with a Cosmo mag. Real talk, if you're under 18 or your folks still block Cornhub, skip this fish.
Yeah, they gotta hook up to keep the species going, and here's the play-by-play. -play. Dude fish flirts his fins off till she caves and drops a bunch of eggs. But wait, she scoops them right back into her mouth like a pro. Bro ain't done though, he flips his anal fin, flashing these fake egg spots that look exactly like the real deal, tricking her into thinking she missed a few. Mom instincts kick in, she pops her gob open to snag him, and bam, that's his cue to blast his load straight down her throat for that internal fertilization magic. She clamps shut, broods the whole mess for like a month straight, no snacks, just vibes, then spits out wriggling fry. What in the actual fish porn is this, God? You writing scripts for Pornhub or what? Clownfish. Next up, Clownfish. Wait, should we just rename this whole vid What the F*** Disney Underwater Cast? Hold up, sorry in advance if you're a die-hard Nemo stan. This might complicate your childhood a little. These little orange striped wonders are just three inches tops, living symbiotically in toxic sea anemones across the Indo-Pacific, like it's their safe haven. Remember those emperor angelfish we talked about? The one-dude harem kings with their squad of five ladies? Yeah, clownfish flipped that script entirely. It's one dominant female ruling a whole group of males, and here's the key. Every single one starts life as a male. No females at birth? None. But when the queen passes, the largest male in the group senses the shift. Hormones rebalance over weeks. Estrogen up, testosterone down, transforming into the new boss female, bigger and badder. Meanwhile, the second largest male steps up as the new breeder and mates with her right away, ensuring the anemone home stays secure and the eggs keep coming without a break. So for anyone out there still trying to drop the switching genders as unnatural card, I'm gonna clock you in the face with a clownfish. Hamlet. Again, God, why do you keep messing with the genders of these fish? Every dusk, a pair of these hamlet fish starts flirting and getting frisky, releasing eggs and sperm into the water for external fertilization as the current sweeps the eggs away. Nothing too wild about that, except these guys are simultaneous hermaphrodites, packing both male and female genitals able to shoot out eggs or sperm whenever the mood strikes. Right after every 10 to 20 seconds, they switch roles. Egg dropper blasts sperm next, tangling for a full hour with built-in rules to keep it fair. No one's stuck as eternal layer or shooter. Switching the positions for you. Mangrove killifish. This little weirdo lives solo in rotting leaf piles in Florida Caribbean mangroves. Low O2 brackish hell, twice as salty as the ocean, loaded with heavy metals. And yeah, you know, it's a hermaphrodite, packing both sperm and eggs, ready to fire them off solo. But unlike those hamlet fish that gotta pair up and swap genders for an hour of awkward tango, the mangrove killifish sets up its own one-man LLC operation. It blasts out sperm, lets that stuff swim right back upstream to fertilize its own eggs internally, then pops the fertilized clutch out into the muck to hatch into mini-me's. Talk about peak independence. No bad dates, just cloning your fam tree like a boss. Archerfish. Yo, I bet you've seen this. <laughs> now let me motivate you to crush that physics class. Nah, this is just gonna wreck your soul one more time. This bad boy chills underwater, pokes its mouth above the surface, crunches Snell's law or whatever fish-brained equation it hacked to clock that the target's gonna look 25 degrees higher than it really is at a 45-degree peep. Then, boom, it blasts a water bullet, ramping from 2.8 meters per second to 4.3 meters per second in just 10 to 20 milliseconds, packing enough oomph to yeet the bug right off the branch into the drink. Oh, and it predicts that parabolic gravity drop, 0 to 15 centimeters depending on height, firing at a shallow 74-degree angle to nail the comp, hitting 100% accuracy at 65 centimeters after some egocentric brain training trial and error. Somehow, we evolved to sweat bullets over this crap while a random fish does it 100 times cleaner. Feel better now? And that's today's menu from WTF Biology. Which one's the weirdest or, uh, tastiest for you? Drop a comment below, smash sub so you don't miss the next wild feast. It's only getting crazier.